All right, part four. Let's do some camera tweaking because this view is getting old. So let's make it look a little bit more interesting. So right click the character, edit player BP. All right, uh, box select all that, comment it out as guard mode. Remember you box select a bunch of stuff and hit C on the keyboard. It brings up this comment box. All right, over in the viewport, let's grab our camera boom which is what our camera is attached to, and I like to move that up to about shoulder height, but also lengthen the camera boom, so under camera, target arm length, set it to about 325, that's what I usually find a decent look, let's test that look real quick, yeah, it looks a bit better for my taste, not that I have good taste, but I like it, I like it better. Now, what we want to do is every time we go into guard mode, we want the camera to shift to give us a better view of where our enemy will be. So instead of just looking like this the whole time, it'll actually shift. I'm pointing at the screen like y'all can see me. <laughs> it'll shift over to closer on your shoulder and give you a better view of your enemy and what you're trying to aim at. So first thing we want to do is we want to grab the camera set a variable right here and call it play camera location we'll change that to a vector this is a location in 3d space so play camera location grab the camera right click right here where it says what is happening yeah oh yeah it'll just default to what it is all right we're good then let's move this there, move it up here. That looks a bit close. Back here, about 105. Mm. I'll test it real quick. Whoa, too close. Move it up a little bit. Let's test that. See if. Nope, shouldn't have moved it up. Boom. Okay, so test that. Let's test it for this guy. Does that look decent? Uh, I think that's gonna work for me. I think it's a bit close still. Back it up just another hair. There we go. I like that a little bit. It looks decent, right? Works for me if it works for you. Anyway, we want to set, we want to duplicate this one and call it guard camera location. Compile. Grab your camera. Right click right here where it says location in the details panel. Copy. Click the guard camera location. Paste. And. Now that we've done that, we can set this back to zero, 0, so that our default play camera is right here, and when we guard, it'll move up to that other one. So let's make that happen. On guard mode, we want to stretch this out a little bit, and add a timeline. Timeline is, well, we'll get into it, and I'll show you timeline camera adjustment for the name of it drag from here type play from start double click to open it up right here you can add a float track float is what we will want and set this to be about hmm, 0 0.2 0 0.2 is a decent gives it a smooth but also quick uh, adjustment so right click anywhere on it really add key to curve float make sure the time is zero and the value is zero then right click somewhere else doesn't really matter where because we're going to go ahead and set the time to 0.2 and the value to one that way it jumps up like that box select both of them right here next to the time where it had it hit zoom to it horizontal right click one of the keynotes hit 
auto. This will make it to where it kind of smoothly transitions instead of just boom, jarring. So that's all we got to do for that. And we will grab our follow-up camera, bring it out, and set active. We'll set actor location. Target being apparently not that. This set location. Set relative location. That's what it was. Not active location. Relative location. Gonna change your cousin's place. Hook update. Not finished. Update to the set relative location. We will drag off this new location and type in lerp. What lerp does is it figures out where is it that, where we want it to go, and the time frame that you want it to get there. So we want it to be hooked to our timeline like this. We want it to go from our play camera location to our guard camera location over that 0.2 seconds. Instead of it just snapping there automatically, it'll, you know, that will do. So, let's just test that, make sure that works the way we're wanting it to. Draw your weapon. Boom. There we go. Now it's not going to go back yet, but to do that, all we're going to do is box select the whole kit and caboodle. Control C. Control V. And instead of play from start, reverse from end. So now it'll whoop, whoop, there we go, whoop, over time. Yep, got it down. That way it kind of gives you that dynamic. I'm running around, I'm looting stuff. Now I'm in combat. Let me face my enemy and get a little bit more God of War style, maybe. I don't know. Kind of similar to that, I guess. Wow. Although I think, yeah, you can do it while you're jumping. So, let's set that up to where you can't do any of that while you're jumping. Basically, you want, off of the beginning, where you check to see if you can guard, you want to also check to make sure your character movement is falling. Is equal to, so you type in the equal sign, get the equal boolean, and leave that like that. Off of can guard get and boolean. This will let you check multiple things before your branches. And make sure that you can guard and that you are not falling. Both of those have to be true in order for you to be able to guard. So now when we come back through, let me check. Can I guard while I'm jumping? No, but as soon as I land, boom, there we go. Now, we will also include a way to make it to where, you know what, let's just add a can jump. Set that to a boolean compile. And over here, before the timeline, because this will make it to where it takes a bit so you can actually in the midst of it do it but we'll set can jump to false play from start let's set can jump to true reverse from end and over on here let's see is falling and can jump. Wait, no, no, no. Not a end. Just back it up. We'll just add another branch. So if can jump is true and it isn't falling, it's false. So can jump. Boom. We'll adjust our equipment sheath one also with that can jump. So I'll move that out a little bit. Set can jump to false. 
control C, control V to put it on the bottom. We also want that one to be false, but oh, that's control C and control V, both of them at the same time. Oh, actually, I just need one because I'll just do at the very end, can jump. So now, if you're equipping a weapon, you can't jump, but as soon as you're done, you can! Yay! And if you're guarding, you can't jump. But as soon as you're done guarding, you can. That camera jostling back and forth was weird, but we'll figure that out on the next one, because I don't want these to go too long. So, oh, but I also said we could do attack state. So, let's do that real quick. Shouldn't take long. We'll add a variable. Can attack. And another one called attacking. After they're finished drawing their weapon and moving into guard mode, we'll set can attack. Set can attack to false off of the bottom because we don't want them to be able to attack if they're not on guard. In our anim graph, off of melee ready, drag off add state, type attacking. Oops. This one will be right off of each other, so attacking. Over here on the right, we want... Uh, block, casting, slash, there it is. Couldn't find it, started to think it wasn't there. I'm going to make sure that's not looping. And then in our event graph, control C, control V to copy that. Type out attacking, promote to variable, attack. Hook that up just like that. hook that up, compile, back in our state machine. If attack is true, then we want to move to our attack animation, and for the back, we want to get get attack equals no, and then boom. Oops, sorry. For now, I'll just set up a left mouse, that's not how you spell mouse, button, B for a branch can attack and we'll set attacking to true. Delay or hold D left click for about mm, I think it's 1.5 for that one. So control C, control V, set attacking to false, and then let's test it out. go. We'll adjust it all in the next one, but and we'll set up the damage function to be able to check and see if you're actually hitting anything and apply damage and all that, but for now that's part four. Thanks for stopping by.